Hello ladies and gents, this is another video brought to you by Antsod. And today's video is about my Acromermix Octospinosus and the 10,000 plus Connolly. I don't think that's a massive far off guess to be fair, because when you see this video you'll see how much there is. They, the fungus is literally packed full of these guys and there's... Well, you'll see the setup in a bit, I tell you. But I would like to say thank you to Ants Davey because he's the one that gifted me this Connolly about a year and a half ago. So even he will probably be surprised how big this Connolly's got. Now, believe it or not, the last actual proper video I did about these was like in October last year. So it's well overdue an update. And there has been some changes. For a start, let's have a look at the setup, how it is today. Now, it's not the greatest photo in the world, but I was trying not to capture all the rubbish that was on the windowsill. But this is the setup as it is today. As you can see, I've got three pods. I will talk a bit more about these pods in a bit. But then you see I've got a modified Rikushi S5, I think it is, Outworld, which I used to do all the feeding from. Now, you've noticed there's tape on there. Well, if you watched my live stream uh, the other week, two weeks ago, I think it was. If not, check it out. I'll talk a bit about this. So what was happening is that um, because I was away for long periods of time, I was just stacking loads of leaves in there to keep them going while I wasn't at home. So I was spending about a week away at home at a time, give or take. And what that did is it increased the humidity in that outworld and then it's forced it um, caused the acrylic to warp. And with it warping, popped the supports on it. And they also moved the fungus into there as well. So I had some fungus growing in there, fungus in the main chamber, and the acrylic was starting to warp. So I've had to put this black tape on, as you can see here, so they couldn't get out. They hadn't got out yet. I was just doing it precautionary-wise, but really good idea. I love it. It was only a prototype. Wakushi is bringing out a retail one very, very soon, he tells me. He's told me this several times, but he's telling me still. Um, and I think he's going to modify it so it doesn't warp like this. But yeah, Really love this Outworld, and if I could replace it with a better one, I definitely would. Because it has literally made feeding these so much easier, because I don't have to worry about the fungus, I don't have to worry about opening it up and them all getting out. I can just put a decent barrier around it, put all the food in there, and then just watch them cook clearly as well, which is great. So as we move on to the pods, you'll see that I've got two fungus pods now. Originally, I only had one fungus pod and one trash one, which is one in the middle right now. Now, that middle one was a prototype one when Wakushi was developing his leaf cutter pods. I was lucky enough to be one of the guys that he selected to trial it, and the end result was the two ones flanking it. But I'm not going to talk too much about that because I've covered it in my other videos. So check out the playlist of these ants because it's all there. Now I know you're looking at this thinking 10,000 ants, where the hell does he get that figure from? Just check this out. Now this is me using a macro lens so you can zoom in and have a look what's going on. Now you know I love a macro shot. But just look how many ants there are here. There is hundreds. But what we'll do first is apologise for the quality of this video. Because you can just see there, there's a lot of condensation in the fungus chambers. I don't know why... This has never happened to me before, but it's since I've moved to the new location, this is a regular occurrence. Now, I heat my room to 25 degrees, which is the ideal temperature for the fungus and these ants. And normally, that means I don't get condensation. But for some unknown reason to me right now, and I've got no idea why, the fungus chambers are increasing in heat internally, and they're about 26 plus degrees, not past the horrid 30, I'd like to point out. So I'm getting condensation. I don't know what's heating them up in the chambers. It's obviously something to do with the ants and the fungus, but I can't figure out why. Once I come to a conclusion to that and I'll work it out so I can stop it, what will happen is I should have no condensation like you can see there, and I should be able to get clear photo images and video images as I normally do. But anyway, as you can see, the fungus is organized in a honeycomb fashion. Now, there's a number of reasons for that. One is because it allows ventilation into the fungus itself. And two, it increases the surface areas that can have maximum amount of fungus growing. And what that also means is there is lots and lots and lots of chambers inside the fungus for it to for the ants to go into. So if you look how many are on the outside, you won't see so much in this video because it's only a narrow field of view, but when I put another video up in a bit, you'll see how many ants are literally chilling on the fungus, outside the fungus. There is thousands of them. And if there's thousands outside of them, there's thousands inside the fungus. And this is just the one chamber, I think this is the larger chamber. I've also got the smaller chamber, which has got a hefty sized fungus in itself in it. And they're just the same in that as well. This is a very large Conley, a lot bigger than I've um, ever experienced it be. And considering that everybody was really scared of leaf cutters because uh, go back two years ago, the only kind of setups for them were custom made and they were very hit and miss if people could hit the requirements for them and stuff like that. But with these Wakushi, Ant Boy, I think Ant Lab's done one as well, it has made keeping these ants 
effortless and these all I do with these is literally just put leaves in them. The fungus regulates itself when it comes to its humidity. I don't put water in it anymore or anything like that. They literally look after themselves. Just keep feeding them leaves. They are so easy to look after. Now this image here is obviously of not, I'm using a macro lens here actually. This is why I can't see bugger all in it because of the condensation, it's right annoying. But anyway, let's go to a better video. So I've taken the macro lens off so you can actually see what's going on in the Connolly here. And as you can see, they are absolutely packed full in there. This is what I'm talking about, why I probably believe they're 10,000 plus, because if there's this many outside the fungus, and bear in mind, this pod is practically full with fungus now, how many are inside it? And not only that though, I've got a second fungus garden. Check this one out. This isn't a small fungus garden by itself. It's still quite a healthy size, but there's still bags of space to expand in it. This has actually grown quite significantly since moved out of the outworld as well. It's got a lot bigger. And it's quite interesting to see how they divide the food up when they collect it, how many go to the main chamber, how many go to this one. But yet again, as you can see, this is absolutely packed full of workers as well. So I think it's a fair guess to say this Conley is 10,000 strong. Now this clip is actually 45 minutes long and I've timed it by 8 speed so you can see what's going on a bit as I talk. Now what these guys are actually going crazy for at the moment is brambles and obviously the brambles are now in fruit. As you can see I've just dumped some berries in there. Now normally it's definitely not recommended that you regularly give leaf cutter ants any kind of carbohydrates or sweet stuff basically because they'll just lose interest in cutting but i did it the other day and i'm doing it today as well as you can see i have dropped some berries in that that's not a problem it's fine they treating it as a bit of a treat it's not a regular thing for them so they're still very interested in cutting but as you can see from this time lapse well speed up video should i say they are going crazy for it. Now, they will drink the sweet stuff, which is great. And I've actually got a video, if I remember, I'll play it a bit later, where for the first time ever, I've actually seen leaf cut rants do truffle axis. I didn't even think they had a social stomach. You learn something new every day. But they do eat the sweet stuff, as you can see. Um, and they do cut it down as well. I've seen them a bit later on in this video, I think it is, if I caught it, I can't remember. But I've definitely visually saw, seen them taking the skin off and taking it to the nest uh, wrong to the fungus so they can feed it to the fungus garden so they do utilize it now i wouldn't recommend doing this overly often because i don't want them to lose interest in cutting like i said before so it's definitely something worth bearing in mind with them but what is interesting is the amount of time it's taken for them to increase the workers coming to cut if you when you first put this in there yes it was busy because i disturbed them but they weren't crazy trailing like they are now so now the words out and they're all going coming back to get some leaves now i know that everyone's like yeah but atters 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 yeah atters are great you know if you've got the space for them and you can think keep feeding them they can grow to millions which is great but this is a great thing about acros acros the Connolly only goes to about fifty thousand, give or take in size so for hobbyists like us they are very manageable. Their food requirements are quite high, to be fair. And in winter, sometimes it can be difficult to keep on top of it. And also keeping your room cool in my old house was a bit difficult. This one, not too bad because this room's constantly in the shade. So it's not too bad when it gets too hot here, but they're easy to look after. I would strongly recommend if you're looking at leaf cutters, yes, I know atters have super massive mages and you know, and they grow really quickly and they're really aggressive, great fun. But if you really want the essence of leaf cutting and a species that's manageable, these are your guys. Because like I said, this is about 10,000 strong. They've got two pods. And because the way that they grow the fungus, you can have a lot of surface area for them to live in in a relatively small area. So to me, these guys are the ones. I ha They have got a trash pod and I do need to clean that out, um, but it's gonna be an absolute nightmare because it is full of rubbish and there is loads of little tiny ones. What these tiny ones actually do in the trash pile, I've got no idea. Now they tend to the fungus in the fungus chambers and I've seen them doing it and they obviously clean the fungus and whatever they do, process the leaves and stuff. But what they actually do in the trash pile, I've got no idea. Um, I've seen them in there, there's always loads in there and when I mean loads, so you have to sift through all the rubbish when you clean it out to just make sure you're not putting any in the bin or anything like that. But I don't know what they do but they're always in the trash pile. I just don't know why. But this is what I love watching, particularly about these guys. Yes, I've seen them mulch down the leaves. I've seen them put it on the fungus. I've seen them with macro shots, them building the fungus garden up and then how quickly the fungus takes over the mulch that they've made with the leaves. But this is the most interesting part. I can sit and watch this for days. 
love watching them cut and I love watching them transport it as well because it's like that childhood thing where you classically see the ants in a documentary and all they ever show is leaf cutters because let's be honest they're really interesting anyway and they've always got the little sails of leaves as they're carrying it off and that's what I love to see to be honest I love the trails I do want to make this setup a lot bigger so they've got a lot more trailing area but at the moment I don't quite have the space for that or the means to at the moment but once I do have the means I am going to expand this setup. I do want to make instead of having it in the the outworld like you've seen it previously I want a big like kind of what's a, a shallow walled acrylic outworld maybe which has got an open side and top so I can just a little lip so I can put barriers so they can't get out and big enough so when they're cutting because you won't see it in this video because she's really good at this to be fair but what they can do is they can cut it and then fall to the floor so I need to make it big enough so any like plants that I put in it or leaves and stuff because I want to put the leaves upright so like they're plants as it were so I can get some really good footage of and close-up footage of cutting as well that's my plan going forward anyway um Yes, yeah, so I need. To, I want to do something like that, but I just don't have the means to at the moment because, you know, I'm paying for a mortgage and rent at the moment, so it's costing me a bomb and I don't have a spare cash. But hopefully once I sell the house, I'll have the spare cash and I can make this setup absolutely epic. Now, like I said, I got these from Ants Davey. He has got them on his website, but they're not for sale yet, but you can reserve a load of them. They've got loads of different Conleys and stuff like that. I think the smallest Conley he's got is going to be about £150, which is about average for Atters, to be fair. Not Atters, Acros even. To be fair so they're a good price but you're gonna have to reserve them and get in there quick i would strongly recommend that when you these do arrive they'll come in a little pod that will the fungus will be demolished by um the postman but don't worry about that they'll reconsolidate it but you need to have a setup ready to go for these so before you buy them definitely look at getting a pod to get the wakushi pods i don't think ant boy's um selling stuff at the moment because he's just setting up his new workshop but yeah go to wakushi check get buy one of his pods get the humidity right in it and then let it crack on when it's a small connolly you will need to keep the pods humidified i uh, once they get to a decent size like mine are you don't need to worry about it because the fungus looks after itself after that and i never humidify it out anymore but Definitely get them. They're definitely worth it. I will put a link to Ants Davy website in down below in the description if you want to check it out. If I can remember the link, I'll put the link to the reserve page for it as well so you can reserve these. Also, there will be a link to the Wakushi website down there as well if you want to buy a pod for them. And just as I was talking rubbish, watch as she breaks it off and then runs off with it. You know what? It's just brilliant. I love watching this. I, like I said, I could watch it forever. I've actually got loads of footage of what I've done for this video. I might put it in one of those like little hidden videos for stuff for people as well. I don't know yet, but it's so cool. I love it. And just as I was about to round up the video, I just remembered this is the video of them doing truffle axis. Now, like I said, either they're engaged in a really long kiss because, you know, incest is best or they're doing truffle axis. Like I said, I didn't believe that these had a social stomach. You never see them store food in their stomachs any way to pass it on. It's the first time I've ever seen it. And it's probably because I put the berries in there. But like I said, a new behavior, never seen it before. Maybe they actually do have a social stomach and I just wasn't aware of it. Well, anyway, that's it for today then, guys. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I must admit, it's great to be back filming my ants and doing videos again. I've really, really missed it but I'm glad to be getting back into it and I hope you guys are too. If you want to become a Patreon member, check out the link below. If you want to become a, support my channel by becoming a YouTube member, just click the tab that's underneath this video, I think it is. But anyway, well, that's it for today then, ladies and gents. I do hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye-bye for now.